Hey everyone, in this video we'll be learning how to solve linear inequalities. Our first example, solve the following inequality for x and graph the solution set on the real number line. And the inequality is 6x minus 1 is less than or equal to 17. So we're going to use the same steps that we would for solving an equation to solve an inequality. So we're going to start by adding 1 to both sides of the inequality. So we have 6x is less than or equal to 18. And we're going to divide both sides by 6. And we have x is less than or equal to 3. Now we need to graph this solution set on a number line. So we'll draw a number line, put 3 in, and we'll include 2 and 4. Now because we have equality, we have a closed point at 3. And now we need to think about x values that are less than 3. So that would be 2, 1, 0. So those are numbers to the left on the number line. So we shade to the left. So let's talk about a few differences. So the first difference, if this was an equation, we would have equals 3 and only have one solution. Now with an inequality, we have an infinite number of solutions. They just have to be values that are less than or equal to 3 on the number line. The other piece that we have to talk about is what allows us to add 1 or divide by 6 on both sides of an inequality and not change the solution set. So that leads us into the addition property of inequality, which states adding a value to each side of an inequality does not change the solution set of that inequality and the multiplication property of inequality. We're multiplying a non-zero positive value to each side of an inequality does not change the solution set of that inequality. And as just a reminder, dividing both sides by a non-zero positive value is still applying the multiplication property because we can think of division as multiplication by a reciprocal value. So these two properties allow us to solve inequalities. Now there's an important subtlety that we have to pay attention to. For the multiplication property of inequality, it's said that the value has to be positive. So that leads to the question, what happens when it's negative? So to answer that, let's look at the following statement. Is the following true or false? 4 is less than 7. So this is definitely a true statement. So if we multiply both sides of the inequality by negative 1, is the inequality true or false? So if we do that, we'd have negative 4 is less than negative 7. So now we have a false statement. So we multiplied both sides by negative 1, and that made the inequality go from true to false. So how could we keep it true, right? Because our goal with any step when we're solving something is to make sure that we're keeping it true or we're keeping the solution set the same. Well, an easy fix here is we could reverse the inequality sign. If we reversed it, we would have negative 4 is greater than negative 7. So what happens if we divide both sides by negative 1? Well, if we divide both sides by negative 1, we'd have 4 divided by negative 1 is less than 7 divided by negative 1 which would give us still the same thing, negative 4 is less than negative 7, which is false. So it seems that if we're multiplying or dividing by a negative value, the only way to keep the solution set the same, or keep the inequality true, is for us to reverse the inequality sign. So that leads us to our next note. If both sides of an inequality are multiplied or divided by the same negative number, then an equivalent inequality results only if the direction of the inequality is reversed. So this is really important to pay attention for whenever we're dividing or multiplying by that negative value in our solving, we have to make sure that we are reversing the inequality symbol. Our next example, solve the following inequality for x and graph the solution set on the real number line. Justify each step with a property. So first thing we can do is we can subtract 3 from both sides. And we're going to have negative 2x is greater than 8. Let's fix that 8. 
So what property justified that step? The addition property of inequality. So I abbreviated each word. If you want to really abbreviate this, you can write this API instead of APE, which would be the addition property of equality. Next, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by negative 2. Now we're dividing by a negative. So oftentimes I'll circle the inequality sign just as a reminder. I'm dividing by a negative. I have to do something with that sign. So x, and I'm going to reverse the inequality sign now. x is less than negative 4. And the property that allows us to divide is the multiplication property of inequality. And if we want to abbreviate that, we can write MPI. And we finished the multiplication property of inequality on that last slide when we talked about negative values. So now we want to graph it on the real number line. So we'll put on negative 4, and we'll add a couple more numbers. So we'll go negative 3 to the right, negative 5 to the left. So we're going to put an open point at negative 4. And now we're going to think, where are the values less than negative 4? So that would be values like negative 5, negative 6, negative 7. So they're to the left. So we're going to shade this part of the number line. Now, if you're using a pencil or a pen, it may be hard. right? I have different colors. You may want to just create your solution set right above your number line. That's completely correct as well. So maybe you'll put an open circle up here and then shade right above the number line. Either way, whatever you find works best for you. So now solve the following inequalities for x and graph the solution set on the real number line. So we'll distribute by 2. So we have 2x plus 2 plus x is greater than 6 minus x. Combining like terms on the left side, we have 3x plus 2 is greater than 6 minus x. So we can add x to both sides. That will give us 4x plus 2 is greater than 6. We can subtract 2 on both sides. 4x is greater than 4. And we can divide both sides by 4. We have x is greater than 1. And now we're going to graph on the number line. So 1, so we'll go 0, 1, and 2 on our number line. So open point on 1, and then x is greater than 1. So where or what x values are greater than 1? So that would be 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to shade to the right. Okay, so very similar to what we were doing with linear equations, but the big difference is with our solution set. First thing, we're now going to represent our solution set on the number line, which we didn't do when we were solving linear equations. And now even a basic equation has an infinite number of solutions. Okay, very different than a linear equation. And then we add in that piece where we're dividing or multiplying by negative values, and we have to worry about the inequality sign. That's something that we didn't have when we were solving linear equations either. Our next example, 7 over 5x minus 4 is less than or equal to x plus 2 thirds. So we can start by subtracting x on both sides. Now in order to do that, I'll do the work over here. So we have 7 fifths x minus x. We need a common denominator. So that would be 5 over 5. Multiply the numerator and the denominator by 5. So that's going to give us 2 over 5x minus 4 is less than or equal to 2 thirds. And then we could add 4 to both sides. Again, we have a little bit of side work. So 2 thirds plus 4 multiplies. So we need a common denominator of 3. So multiply the numerator and the denominator by 3. So this would really be 12 over 3 
plus that two thirds. So we have two fifths x is less than or equal to 14 over three. And then our last step, we're going to multiply both sides by five over two. So we have x is less than or equal to, so the 14 and the two can simplify and give us a seven, and that's a one. So seven times five is 35 in the numerator. Three times one is three in the denominator. So now we'll set up our number line to illustrate our solution set. So 35 over three, I'll put that right in the middle. So that's between what two values? So 33 over three would be 11. And then 36 over three would be 12. So it's between 11 and 12, closer to 12, although my picture could be a little better. Now we're close point on 35 over three, and x is less than or equal to that. So the values that are less than 35 over three would be 11, 10, nine. So we're shading to the left. Perfect. 5x minus 12 cannot be equal to 38. So not equals to also falls into the category of an inequality, right? It's not an equality, so therefore it's an inequality. So let's see how this one would work out. So we'd add 12 to both sides. So we have 5x cannot be equal to 50. Divide both sides by 5 x does not equal 10. So now we have to graph our solution on a number line. So 10, so it can't be equal to 10. So that means we have an open point on 10, but x can be any other value. So it could be nine, eight, seven. It could also be 11, 12, 13. So we're going to shade in both directions. So there is our solution set. Now, one thing to point out, because this inequality doesn't have a direction, right? We don't have a greater than or less than, it's just not equals to. If we were dividing by a negative five in this example, it would just stay not equals to. Okay, so just a subtle difference than the inequalities that we were looking at previously. Now we have one third times the quantity x plus 11 minus two x is less than four times the quantity three minus x plus six. So we'll start by distributing one third. So we have x over three plus 11 over three minus two x is less than, distribute the four, 12 minus four x plus six. Now we'll combine like terms. So combining these, we need to Make this have a denominator of three, so multiply by three. So that would be negative six x. So we have negative five x over three plus 11 over three is less than 18 minus four x. So now we can add four x to both sides. So let's see, I'll do this on the side. So we need a common denominator of three. So that's going to be negative five over three x plus 12 x over three. So we have seven over three x plus 11 over three is less than 18. Now we'll subtract 11 over three on both sides. Again, we need a little bit of side work, so 18 minus 11 over three. So multiply numerator and denominator by three. So the numerator, so that's going to be 30 plus 24, so 54 over three minus 11 over three. So we have seven over three X is less than, let's see, that's going to be 43 over three. 
and then we're going to multiply both sides by 3 over 7. So we have x is less than, so the 3 simplify, leave us just 1's, so 43 over 7. Now we need to graph this solution set on a number line. So we have 43 over 7. So what two values is that between? So we have 42 over 7 would be 6. So we have a 6. And then 49 over 7 would be 7. So we have an open point at 43 over 7. And we're looking for values that are less than it. Okay, so 6, 5. That's going to mean we're going to shade to the left. Perfect. Now we're going to step it up a little bit. So now we have an inequality with more than just one variable, right? We have these A's and B's, which are constants instead of numbers. So instead of having 5x, they told us AX. And they've told us that A is greater than B, and they want us to solve for X in terms of A and B. Okay, so first thing we need to notice is that there are two terms in this inequality with X in it. So we need to group those on one side of the inequality so that we can work to isolate the X. So we'll start there. We'll subtract BX on both sides. So we have AX minus BX minus 3b is greater than or equal to 7a. We can add 3b to move that term that doesn't have an x in it. So we have ax minus bx is greater than or equal to 7a plus 3b. Now we have two terms with x in it. So we can rewrite this expression as x times a minus b. That's greater than or equal to 7a plus 3b. So you can think of this as factoring right, or using the distributive property to rewrite this expression. But either way, we've isolated the x now. So that means we're going to divide both sides by a minus b. Now, when we're dividing both sides of an inequality, the question that we have to ask ourselves is, are we dividing by a positive number or are we dividing by a negative number because it makes a difference, right? Our sign will be affected whether we're dividing by a positive or dividing by a negative. So how are we going to know whether a minus b is positive or negative? Well, if we go back to the statement of the problem, they told us that a is greater than b. Right? So I'll just remind us here, a is greater than b. Well, if a is a larger number than b is, and we're taking the difference of those two numbers, that means that we're going to get a positive result. So that means that these are a positive number. So that means we leave the inequality sign alone. We're dividing by a positive number. So then our final step, when we clean up the left side, we have x is greater than or equal to 7a plus 3b divided by a minus b. So this is similar to our literal equations when we were solving earlier, and now it's the inequality version. And the extra step that we have to take is deciding whether this expression in terms of a and b is positive or negative. And we do that based off the information that they gave us. Right, so a lot of different details that we covered that we have to put together when we're solving linear inequalities. So make sure that you've taken good notes you picked up on each one of them, they're going to help you solve any problem that you are given.